This is McFly Angler. starts now. For a hook, you will need a long shank nymph hook like these Risen 9231s, and today I'm tying a size 12. Place the hook securely in your vise. For thread, I really like this Vivas 10 knot, and today I'm using brown. Start your thread at the eye of the hook, and then snip or snap off the waist. Then bring your thread down to the bend of the hook. Next, we will need some dubbing. Today I'm using this Antron dubbing in a cream color. You will want a fair amount here, since we will be bulking up the hook a bit. Dub this onto your thread pretty tightly, and fairly thick as well. Now wrap the dubbing noodle up the hook shank covering the hook. But leave a small section bare just behind the hook eye. Now we need some 2mm foam. Now last week I tied a Chernobyl ant that also used foam. As mentioned before, this comes in a wide variety of colors. Anyway, today I'm using tan. These are called River Road Cutters. They make easy work of foam bodies on flies. We will cut out some bodies like last week's video. However, we will want to cut these a bit longer. So bring the cutter down a bit from the edge and then cut out the foam. We'll now need some scissors to finish the cut like so. Measure out a tail to about a hook gap length. Place this on top of the hook shank and make one wrap over it to put a mark of measurement on the foam. Now grab some super glue and coat the top of the hook with glue. Place the foam back on top of the hook and press down to glue it into place. And just like last week, we will make one even wrap over the foam and then bring the thread down a bit with a cross over the foam. Then make two to three wraps to create a segment. Do this three times until you reach the hook bend. and then come back up two segments, crossing over the opposite direction like so. Now we need some deer hair. I really like this bleach stimulator hair, which has finer fibered fur. However, any deer hair will work for this fly. Cut off a fairly thick section like so. Then comb out the under fur and short fibers. Put it in a stacker and align the tips. Well here I have a broken tip on one of the fibers. It happens sometimes, and it is best if you can pull this out. Okay, measure out the wing to extend back about as long as the foam tail, maybe a little shorter. Now cut off the butt ends at that measurement so you have a squared off piece to tie in like so. Tie this down with tight wraps, and don't worry about flaring the hair. Pull up the excess foam and fold it back over the front like so to create a big head on the fly. Make a couple wraps to capture it. However, try to make sure it's tied on evenly. Here I angled the thread a bit, which changed the shape of the head, so I decided to redo that part. Okay, here we go. I'm happy with the shape of head here. I've got a few fibers angling out a bit, so it's okay to cut them off if you do as well. Now we need some rubber legs. Today I'm using the centipede legs in speckled tan color. Cut one piece off the bunch. As mentioned last week, these come in a wide variety of colors and sizes. Double up on the leg and tie it down on top of the fly with two loose wraps. Cut the loop to make two legs. Then pull one leg down the side of the fly and the other down the other side. Let's grab a bit more of that dubbing and make a thin tight noodle on your thread. Then wrap this between the spaces. Pull back the legs as well when you wrap and this will help lay down the back legs a bit more. Okay, now cut a strip of some lighter colored foam. Place this on top of the fly head like so and tie down with a couple tight wraps. This will act as a hot spot on the fly and be easier to see on the water. Cut off the excess piece to leave a small hot spot. 
Okay, now you can whip finish your fly. Many people whip finish like this over this section. However, I find that it can come loose a bit easier. So I actually pull everything back and make a wrap in front of the head, right behind the hook eye. Then whip finish there. Now some say this makes a weak point because the thread is exposed, but I don't find that to be the case. In fact, I find it way more durable. However, it's up to you how you want to finish your fly. Either way, add a drop of super glue over the whip finish to ensure that it will last through many fish strikes. Well guys, my camera for some reason didn't film this part, but I also add a bit of glue on the side where the legs are, and then cut the legs to length. Cut the front a bit shorter than the back, and I like the back legs to extend out just about to the back of the foam tail there. And there we have it, the finished GFA hopper. I don't know who the originator of this pattern is, but it has become one of my favorite foam flies. It works great for trout, bass, and even sunfish. It's durable and floats very well. Let me know in the comment section what your favorite foam pattern is. As you all know, I have gotten you all discounts from both www.risenfly.com and www.dooliesflyfishing.com. Dooleys offers great prices on all of the name brand fly tying materials and Risen Fly manufacturers their own hooks, rods, reels, and other gear for fly fishing. Their products are top quality, and best of all, they are priced very reasonably. Not only are the prices at these two shops great, but like I said, they are offering all of my subscribers a discount. So use McFly at checkout when ordering from either of these shops, and you will get an additional 15% off of their already great prices. I want to also thank all of my patrons who support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help support this channel and also get some great perks like early access to my videos, participate in live streams, and more. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash mcflyangler to sign up today. I also thank all of you who share all my videos with your friends and your continued support by hitting the like buttons and subscribing. Thank you for making these videos possible. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.